Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Life Donations Camarillo. You know, this week, my brother and I went to go take our driver's license test, and we passed. But during the whole process, we were very stressed, especially my mom and myself and my boyfriend. Um, during that time while we were out with the instructor, I had my entire family and pastoral team that they, they were all praying for me. And I just felt those prayers, and God gave me the strength. Well, good morning and welcome to Life for the Nations Camarillo. I'm Pastor Jen, and we're so very glad that you've joined us. This is Pastor Nick. And yes, we do glorify God that we got through that test. It was a, a driver's license test, and I didn't realize it that I would be more nervous for my kids than they would be nervous themselves. <laughs> we did feel the prayers of the whole pastoral team, and I was just praying in tongues. That's all I could do. It was so much fun, but Ah, oh, so good. The fun part came afterwards when we celebrated, and we're so very grateful, and, and we glorify the Lord. Okay, I want to just talk to you today about how mighty His power is already working in each of us who know Jesus. The song says, come all ye faithful. Are you faithful to come to the Lord and worship Jesus every single day? Are you always ready for God to release his destiny and his plans into your life? You know, when the angel Gabriel announced to Mary that she was chosen, she was favored, she was destined for more, for forevermore to become the mother of Jesus, her answer was to glorify God. Mary was ready to accept God's plans and rejoice in spite of all the human cultural responses to this pregnancy. Luke 1.37 the angel said, for the word of God will never fail. And the New American Translation says, for nothing will be impossible for God. When she asked, how can this be? And Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. I have the same feeling. Lord, may everything that you have said about me, that he said about you, come to pass in our lives. Everything. 
I don't let God, don't let any of God's destiny ever be held back in your life. Come and say yes to his power and to his plans and to his mighty power working within you. You know, every word we speak from the word of God will be completed in our lives. Our voices and our words are powerful. They can break the chains and the enslavement that the devil has over our loved ones. We can release his power through our words when we agree with heaven. And that was a huge, uh, amazing revelation for me this week. Not that I haven't preached on that before, but all of a sudden I just was like, Lord, I haven't been really understanding that until this moment, something overwhelming, a new revelation came of how powerful my words are. And I imagined a million little arrows going out into the atmosphere to, to touch people's lives, to plant seeds of life, to woo those that are captured by the devil in the prodigal, their prodigal days, they're in a pig pen somewhere, um, eating the slops of hell, and they're like thinking that they're happy. But really true freedom, true liberty, true joy come when we are in God's destiny for our lives because the whole world has been created for God and everything's moving towards God. All of nature moves toward God and then he wants you to move in that as well. When you read your Bible, you need to understand that you are reading Jesus in written form. It doesn't matter if it's the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, and you're like, I don't even know how to pronounce that. I don't even know what this means. It's so wordy, so long. How many times do we have to talk about the cubits of the temple? Well, that is Jesus in written form. That temple is Jesus. It represented him on this earth back in the day when he wanted everybody to be worshiping him in the temple, in the Old Testament. Now we're in the New Testament. And each one of us, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so he wants all those cubits they talk about and everything enshrined in gold and everything so perfectly measured and built with the curtains and every loop and every rod. That is you. That is that is what God wants to do inside of you. He says, I want to build you up so precious and so perfect, so wonderfully polished and ready so that you go out and everywhere you go, you are my voice. You are carrying my words and you are releasing it everywhere you go. We faithful ones are the ones that adore him. And we come to Jesus every day by reading his word, by speaking his word and our response to any request he has of us, must be like Mary. I am the Lord's servant. You know, it's not easy to humbly accept what God has for you. Your surrender at the cross signified that you are now willing to accept any destiny he has for you. And you're willing to rise up as an, his ambassador and his agent of change. And like Mary, we are now carriers of our Jesus. Our bodies are called, like I said, the temple of God. And the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to radically change us into his likeness and move us into heaven's destiny for our lives. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, it says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You don't belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price so you must honor God with your body. Mary was willing. She understood the assignment that was given to her. And God chose her because she had been honoring God with her body. She'd go to the temple. She made sure she went through the purification, every kind of rite that was expected of her, what she was supposed to eat. I mean, the laws were very, very stringent. And she made sure she followed every single one so that she was perfectly ready for God to do whatever he planned and wanted to do with her life. She was willing to trust God and accept her destiny. Are we who follow Jesus willing to do the same? I'll never forget hearing a pastor preach that each of us carry Jesus in our spirit. It was like March and he was reading Luke 1, you know, where they talk about Jesus becoming flesh. It was maybe it was John 1. And I was like, and he's like, each one of us carry Jesus. And each one of us need to give birth to the destiny that he has for our lives. I was astounded by that revelation. For me, the stories of the Bible were exclusively for the heroes of the Bible. For them, Samson's story was all about just Samson. It didn't 
really relate to anything with me spiritually. It was just someone that I was to not follow his bad example in some cases and follow his good example in other cases. With Mary, that she was chosen and favored, I never believed that about myself. Yes, I accepted Jesus, but the way I was taught was such a funny religious way that I was totally blinded to ever having any kind of brilliance or intelligence or destiny. It was all about, you know, well, prove yourself at school. Do you have any kind of, of intelligence when you're doing, for example, science or math? And of course, when I failed, everyone was like, well, you just must not be chosen or favored, my friend. And it always made me feel so rejected. And I always felt so awful and, and, and stupid and, uh, and a big loser. And that was a spirit of religion will do that. When you make somebody else feel like a loser and feel like, a, a, like they're stupid, that is the devil trying to work through them to destroy you from believing that you were chosen or favored. And our churches are teaching that. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to just call them out on this. It is a doctrine of the devils to not teach our children and our, and our congregations that they are chosen, that they are favored, that they have a destiny from heaven, and that they're not to accomplish it in human terms. Our, where our words are powerful. God's destiny for each one of us is that we prosper, not just financially, but in every way, including math and science that I'm talking about earlier. It, our words are powerful. So when my son, for example, comes and says, I'm just never going to get this math, I say, no, in the name of Jesus, you have the mind of Christ. The will of God is already working through you. Yes, you are going to get that math. Yes, you understand it right this very minute. The same with me. I declare and I decree that I am going to understand the concepts I need to make sure I know for my business, for what's coming next, juggling everything I juggle each day as a mom and as a pastor, but also as a teacher and full-time businesswoman. I'm going to be say that I am chosen in favor. Yes, indeed. And I'm going to accept every provision God has for me from heaven. What a powerful concept. Yes and amen to those concepts. I'm saying yes to that new revelation and let it illuminate a new light into your life as well. Because you know what? This week I was working with two little girls and I know they go to a classical church. I know which one. And these girls memorize scripture each week. They go to Sunday school. They go to church every Sunday. They come from families that pray and read the Bible together. And yet each little girl, when I said, and it was in Spanish, I am, and they had to fill in the blank. And I said, your choices are important or intelligent or a champion. You get to choose one of those three. And they, all, they, they said, no, I'm not intelligent. No, I'm not important. Where did they learn this? Both of them come from godly families. Both of them, their grandmothers are leaders in their churches. I believe it flows from the spirit of, like I said, religion and ignorance in our churches. And I told the girls that you are image bearers of Jesus. And when you call yourself unimportant or unintelligent, then you're calling Jesus that too. We have to get rid of ignorant and religious teaching that's pervasive. In our own mindset, in our classical churches, everybody needs a new revelation. We need to start teaching everybody in a different way. And Jesus came to unlock heaven for each of us. He calls each of us just as he called Mary. He calls each of us and his mighty power is working in each one of us. Ephesians 3.10, God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Folks, those unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places are the darkness. That's Satan. That's his kingdom. being, ex And also the angelic host from heaven. And God says, I want the church to rise above all of that. There's a second heaven war that we are to war and wage with our words that are so very powerful. The whole church is called to be all of, all of us like an army from heaven in agreement with heaven, moving in our destiny and taking over this world of darkness. Everywhere that you see unrighteousness and lack of justice and you see judges that are wrong, you see people that are doing evil, you rise up and pray against it. You rise up and say, no, I'm not going to let that continue. I'm going to pray in and I want to see those things change. Anarchic laws that come into place in our state, taxes that are sky high. We say, no, they are unjust laws. Unjust when all of our money was sent to China. $90 billion here in the state of California sent off to China to buy masks, please. We're being robbed left and right. 
And I'm not saying that I'm going to leave the state, even though everything says, you know, oh, you better run away. We're here. We're going to be giant slayers. We're going to destroy the work of the enemy. We have authority over the unseen kingdom between the angelic host and the, the spirit of darkness, the angelic rulers that are fallen from the devil. We have the power. And the church has been called to display God's wisdom over all these unseen rulers and authority. We're called to rule over the dominion of Satan and stamp out his power by the words that we speak, by the attitude we take, and by the life that we lead, the lifestyle that you and I lead. We are each called to move into our destiny and bear the child he has for us to carry. Ephesians 4.21, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. You know, when you look at some other child, I was sharing this with my daughter earlier today, and I, I said, you know, I've always been very competitive. I want my kids to be the most popular. I want them to be the most beautiful. I want them to be the most talented. I want them to get the best grades. I want them to be the highest achievers. And the Lord helped me to see that when we are going after those kinds of very superficial things, we are greedy. It's greed. And I had to repent. I said, Lord, it's a spirit of competitiveness. I need to repent. Forgive me, Lord, for wanting that, for saying, oh, it's got to be my way. No, it does not. It is never righteous or holy to be competitive or greedy. Let the Holy Spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. I had to renew my mind. I had to confess the sin, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And when you confess your sin, he is faithful and just, and he will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And I needed to be cleansed of that moment. I needed to repent. Mary had to fully embrace her new assignment. Whatever plans she had now had to change. She had to care for her body, her words, her entire being had to be dedicated to this wonderful and supernatural new life she carried. Mary had to shut her ears to the words of rejection or condemnation she heard from others, even her future husband, from her family, from her, from her neighbors. She had to open her ears only to hear heaven's voice and listen to only those who would speak words from heaven. And this is why I believe the Holy Spirit led her to travel to see her cousin Elizabeth, who was carrying her own supernatural miracle. She was pregnant with John the Baptist in her old age. And John leapt in her womb. And she said, who is this that is coming that comes and bears my Lord? Elizabeth spoke words of refreshing um, validation over Mary. To say, you are carrying my Lord. You are carrying the Messiah. And that's why Mary had to be led into a place of safety and security. And she stayed with Elizabeth for three months. And today we each need to embrace and understand that we are too. Also, we are carriers of his spirit. And he has marvelous and powerful plans for each of us. But are we like those two little girls I described? Feeling like we're unimportant? unintelligent, maybe apathetic, maybe lazy. Maybe we're like, I've used all my skills and talents. I'm not going to use them anymore. I'm tired. Do we appreciate that we are carriers of the living word and the temple of the Holy Spirit? Can you imagine some of these movies that we watch where the hero is out there and he's doing all sorts of amazing uh, flips and jumps and then he gets the enemy and you're like, wow, can you imagine what, what would happen if they just kind of dulled down, slumped down on the sofa and said, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to watch TV. There's no hero action in that. No one wants to watch that. It's sad. It's ugly. It's, it's like, okay, I'm going to need a second part to this movie because I want to see my hero rise up. You are the hero. Rise up. Look at what it says in Ephesians 3.16. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down in God's love and keep you strong. 
He has unlimited resources that he will use to empower you, to guide you into the next thing that's going to happen in your life. What is it that God is birthing inside of you? Is it a big move? And you were really actually quite unaware of this move. And all of a sudden it just has dropped into your lap. Are you ready to embrace it? Or are you crying into your soup, weeping and wailing and complaining because you did not want that? I felt that way when we moved into this house. I didn't want to live here. I didn't want this neighborhood. We had searched for a new house for months and months and months. And finally, we were back to this neighborhood that I'd already rejected. But we drove into a new street I had not actually been on called J Avenue, which is where we live now. And I looked at it and I looked at the house and I said, it's in the middle of the whole street. And there was a light shining in it. And I knew it was the right one for us. I knew without a shadow of a doubt. And when I came in, I have to be honest, it was an absolute disaster. It's kind of like our lives when we first come to Christ. The plumbing was broken. There was uh, one of the bathtubs was leaking out the front door. Um, the floor was covered in carpet that smelled like dog, uh, wet dog. That's what the whole house smelled like. Um, we had no kitchen sink. The, the, the tap just flopped right off. Um, the, the whole sink was completely so disgusting. Everything was just blur blurbing up because the whole place was just, um, I guess the best word would be filled with contamination everywhere. It had to be clean. It had to be completely cleaned, restored, renewed, rebuilt. And Pastor Nick and myself, we have worked on it. Our children have worked on it and worked on it, painted it and made it look nice again, made it look beautiful. It's shiny and clean and pretty now. And that's the way God wants your life to look as well. Is there more we can do? Yes, there's more. And there's more that can be done in your house as well. You know, when Mary received the announcement from the angel Gabriel, the heavens opened over her. And every resource that she would need was then exactly provided. And we have to hear, each of us need to hear that. When you hear from heaven, you need to know that every resource will be provided for. If you're going to be moving somewhere, You've got to know that that is exactly where God is going to send you, angels before you and behind you, because you do not want to walk out of God's will. And I think a lot of people have left California, and although I understand the reasons why, yes, of course, I also believe that some people have walked out of their destiny. Look, at, look, we might have the opportunity to move further north up into the Bay Area, which is exactly the area where one could say oh my that's the worst and least place anybody besides new york city would ever want to move to you know what i am a giant slayer i am a champion i am going to be empowered and receive every resource from heaven if that is where god has called us to go if that's not where we're meant to go then we will not move from this place because we stand on god's plans god's voice is who we listen to Mary's heart, your heart, her mind, her spirit. You know what they did when they were told, this is what you're going to do is bear a child named Jesus. He's going to be the Messiah who saves us from our sins. Every doubt and every fear, every emotion immediately lined up to heaven's plans. And you know what broke out of her spirit? The Magnificent. And she began to sing and praise the Lord. She was emotionally, mentally, and spiritually aligned to heaven's plans. Are you? Are you emotionally, mentally, and spiritually aligned and in agreement to what heaven is saying into your life? Do you listen only to his voice or are you still listening to your own or rejecting heaven's destiny because you're like, well, it's not convenient. It's not comfortable. Luke 146. I was thinking like, yeah, people cannot move out from the state. I mean, California. They cannot do it out of fear because they're... Fearful what's or here. angry. They're angry. Well, angry, but it's kind of fear sometimes. I mean, we should not we should not do anything out of fear. That's right. Because uh, our spirit is not like a spirit of fear, it's a spirit of power. That's right. So it's uh so if God tells you to move, yes, you should move, but you should just move because of fear, because of you see what might happen. That's right. Then you might be out of alignment. Well, and I think about Ruth um <clears throat> in the book of Ruth, both Naomi and her husband. Um, left Judah because there was a famine in the land and moved to Moab, but they didn't, I don't believe that the Bible says, and I believe the Bible is teaching us clearly that they should not have left. 
God had every resource provided for them. What they did not have anymore was faith in God. And every doubt and every fear and every emotion lined up to hell. And then it led them down a very bad trail. And they ended up in a place that was very dry and even worse off than they had been before. You know, it's the same thing with um, uh, Abraham. You know, runs off Egypt. That's right. And uh, God never told them. God to never told him. Luke one forty six. This is what Mary said, and this is who we are learning about right now. Mary said, "Oh, how my soul praises the Lord." Our soul, guys, is our emotions. That's where our emotions are. Our soul is where it, it, we're producing emotions. So when you're soulish, you're just living off of your feelings and your emotions. But she says in verse 47, how my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Let those be the words that you speak today and for the rest of this week. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. Verse 48, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. I don't know that Mary's goal was to be famous or talented or... Um, or someone who would have uh, her name in lights, you know, on Broadway. No, she was a, a, a girl who said, I'm your servant. Here I am. Everything you and I do needs to be serving, serving, serving others. Jesus took off his divinity like a coat, got down on his knees, and washed our feet. That's what he did to Judas. That's what he did to John, his disciples, before he went to the cross. That's what he did every single day that he was working his ministry, is serve the people. And some of them rejected him. Some of them were healed and ran away. Look at the 10 lepers, and only one came back to worship him. You and I need to choose to serve. You and I need to choose and say, yes, I will serve and keep it simple. I don't need to be glorified. I don't need to be called certain names. Forgive me, Lord. I want to just serve you. And then you, every resource from heaven will be multiplied and you will be glorified through my life. How do you and I respond when God supernaturally implants a baby in us? Perhaps it's a move, like I said, in your work circumstances. Maybe it's a new business. Maybe it's the need to, tr to travel. Maybe a radical change in your marriage or family. Do we rejoice at these changes or do we mourn and rage? After we moved out of that rental house, I went over to parking lot. My favorite store was Dollar Tree, and I cried. Ugly cry. I was so sad to leave that house. I loved that neighborhood so much. And I had prayed and prayed that God would allow us to stay. But you know what? It wasn't the best house for us. The neighborhood wasn't the best for us. It is here in this house and in this neighborhood that we've seen our ministry flourish, We've seen children come and accept Christ. We've seen adults have their lives transformed. That is where God wanted us in this house, not over in that other one. So you need to trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your soul or your emotions or your logic, your understanding, and in all ways acknowledge him. He'll make your paths straight. No, I, I knew that verse. I believed it. But it was it's clear to me that I was acting out of my feelings and my emotions. Do you continue trusting in God in spite of it all? What comes out of your emotions? What does God have to work with? Like I said, Mary was a clean and pure vessel. She had always done everything that the, the Torah had told her to do when it came to what food she ate, how she should live her life. And she knew she was a lowly servant girl. She knew it. Girls were nothing back then. They were just the same as, you know, cattle. I mean, it was the men who got to have all the authority. And yet here, God gave her this exaltation. She was honored. She was lifted up and she knew it. And she didn't say, I'm unintelligent and unimportant. She said, I'm chosen in favor and I will magnify the Lord. God chose Mary because she was destined to be the mother of Jesus. And God chooses you as well. Mary was prepared for marriage as well and to become a mother. And although she and Joseph had not formally married, she was ready for that assignment. Are you preparing yourself today for your assignments? There might be drastic changes and difficulties, but are you aligning your emotions and your mindset so that your spirit is one with the Father's plans in heaven? Ephesians 3.16 says, I pray 
that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Verse 17, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And verse 18, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. That was what Mary said. Let all that power, all that life flow through me. I want to magnify the Lord. And I, I pray that you will say that as well. You know what? In spite of all the circumstances, all the voices I might hear, my own spouse, my own family, my own, my neighbors, I choose to hear God's voice alone. Let's pray. Father God, each one of us has got a baby inside of us that you have for us to give birth to. Maybe it's a new business. Maybe it's a new adventure. Maybe it's a, a, something new, something new in our family that will come. And you say, if you are aligned to heaven, you are ready for what is coming. And oh, God only produces life and goodness and righteousness. So if something bad comes, you know that is not from God. And that is where you begin to pray and say, Lord, what is blocking the great blessings that are to come into my life? What is blocking those beautiful warehouses in heaven from flowing into my life? What is it, Lord? I put a hedge of protection around my family. I put a bloodline of protection around my home, my heart, my emotions. And I say in the name of Jesus that you are releasing over each one of us today all the provision that you have. And we are aligning ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually with heaven's plans, completely aligned. Mm -hmm. And we destroy the work of the enemy. We say the devil has no plans. He will not prosper in our lives, in our city, and with our family, in Jesus' powerful name. And we say yes to every plan you have under heaven. Yes, Lord. Yes, we will establish your kingdom here on this earth. Yes, we will use our voices to be mighty instruments for your glory and for your honor. Yes, we will be soldiers for Christ. We will be that army you have called us to be. We will rise up with the power of the whole almighty God. Supernaturally, we will move as you've called us to move as people that are, have the mind of Christ. And we will never let those words come out of our mouth. I am unimportant. I am unintelligent. I am not a champion. I'm a loser. Those words are from hell. And we will not align, align ourselves with hell any longer. We cut with the, any kind of vicious circle of, of the traps of the enemy, any kind of chain that is holding us back. And we release now the power of God over each one of you so that you are fully embracing and fully understanding how amazing, important, chosen, and favored you are to do all that God has called you to do in Jesus' powerful name. Walk in how great and how wide and how deep and how amazing his love is and how many resources from heaven he has for you. Let yourself understand that and walk in that in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pass the time over to Pastor Nick, but if you want to talk to us, if you have any prayers, any praying, any questions, you can contact us, private message us. There's Pastor. Yeah, I was just thinking what you mentioned about the, uh, what we speak, the word we speak. Because That's right. What we, speak, we need to speak more that is aligned with, uh, with the word of God. Amen. And not something that is going against the word of God. Because That's when right. we speak negative stuff, mm -hmm. what does the word of God uh, say? Because I can kind of remember I listened to something this morning, uh, some preaching about, she mentioned about this, I'm not sure, how old this, this, uh, you two, or the gal, that, that, like the gal that you mentioned about, uh, but I guess she was very sick, and I think it was cancer or something, but she was basically just bones, and they were basically just preparing her for, um, that she would die, and, uh, I mean, she was Christian, but then she came across that the uh, virus uh, strikes I'm here. Minor strikes I'm here. And, and she, and uh, she has declared that it says in the word, her virus strikes I'm here. And Amen. she was believing the word. And then her mother said, well, no, that's just, it's, it, she, she didn't, she kind of like a mom. She mom sabotaged the yeah. power of healing that but, God has for but then this she said, child. Like, but mom, you have told us that we need to believe what the word of God says. Amen. So then, uh, I think the mom went down and she, I guess she, 
cheap base, yes. It's bad. Uh, by your, your strategy. And did the, the, the mom repent? Well, then when she came down, she was not going to take like maybe a few weeks later. She was like, she wow. Was, like gained back all the placement. Well. Wow. Amen. So that's how important it is that we trust in the word of God. That's right. You need to release the word of God over your circumstances. If it's healing in your physical body, it needs to be every day with power, without fail. Do it, and you will see that healing. Um, if that situation that you're facing, if it's not aligned with the word of God, then we just have to speak it, uh, that's right. the word of God over it. That's right. Amen. So that's that's that we have the authority. Um, that's why God has given us the authority that we can speak that word. And that's why it's so important that we speak, that we speak his war and not negative because we don't want to speak bad stuff in the situation but we want to speak his word and align the situation with his word that's right so uh so today i want to basically just, uh, touch about that jesus is the only way Hallelujah. and we know that the, the bible says that jesus is the only way to the father what it says in john 14 6. and sometimes we might hear that that because we say this that Christianity is like a hostile or we are so exclusive that we don't include the rest. I mean, you can't just be the only one that's right. There must be other ways to the body, not only to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we hear like this expression that there are many ways to God. Mm -hmm. And there are a whole bunch of different religions in the world. We have Buddhists, we have Islam, Hinduism. I will show how many religions there are. And each one has like the claim to have their way to God. So when we read in John 46, Jesus said to them, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. That's right. It's definitely kind of exclusive in some sense that you can't come to the Father except through me. So Jesus said he's the only way to the Father, and there are no other ways. I mean, he's basically excluded everything else. And we also have heard the like, expression of all, um, all roads in this room. Which is based on the Roman Empire. They have very advanced like road system and all major roads they led directly to the capital, which mm -hmm. is Rome. This is also figured expression that meaning that all choices, methods, or actions eventually leads to the same result. Mm -hmm. So some people might have that same attitude when it comes to go to heaven that if I'm good enough, mm -hmm. I will get it. But then of course says, with what measurements will you use to decide if you're good enough? Mm. Like, yeah. Uh, the world's measurements. Yeah, like, there has to be something to kind of um, move a measure. Okay, mm. what I'm doing right now is that, is that good enough? Mm. And we know that God gave us the Ten Commandments for us to have a measurement. So he gave us, like, this command, okay, this is what you have to be us fulfill to be able to kind of be called righteous, mm. he said. So this is kind of what is required for us to have, like, we up to the standard, like the standard that God requires. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we can definitely see, like, it's uh, it's pretty easy to uh, see that, yeah, we definitely probably fail at least two to three of them. I mean, uh, we might not see it, we might not uh, do different kind of stuff, but then if you read as we then read in the gospel that how even Jesus kind of even went deeper and said like maybe you don't think I don't commit adultery but then uh, he said like even if you look at someone the last time you commit adultery so it's can can I even run deeper but then let's see if you look at the fourth man uh, that we should not have another God's name to God I mean how often do we maybe put our phone or something before God I mean do we all mm. put like him as number one, or is someone like, okay, I gave you some time on Sunday, but the rest of the week, it's I, I want to do whatever I want. Now we put something else before him. So now, That's right. so now we already failed that commandment. And uh, we also have like other people might say that uh, all religions lead to heaven. But we know that some religions are going contrary to what God stands for. Um, we have like we have like a book and that kind of stuff, like the one that's there's even a religion of Satanism. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like kind of like well, Wicca is more yeah. uh, witchcraft and worshiping the earth. Basis. They all have their own yeah. little nuances, but it's just based on, I mean, which is kind of the opposite. Like, opposite. I mean, they have like a different gods in the sense, which is 
uh, evil compared to our God who is just and righteous. Right. So now, well, let's see if if uh, if they basically have a religion that is have like the actual say a doctrine that is contrary to what God stands for. So why would they now even want to spend the turn with that? Let's see if it's true that all religion is to have now. If they have like a different doctrine, why would they now spend the turn with a God that they basically uh, despise because they are uh, more for this other part? And another thought, <clears throat> another thought that that might be a little bit kind of related is that some people they must might just attempt to like a church on a Sunday. They have more like a fire insurance, so they come to heaven when they die. But during the week, they, they don't give much attention to God. So one thing it's kind of interesting to thought is that if they if they don't want to spend time in heaven on earth to uh, to uh, to spend time with God, why do they not want to spend eternity with God? Because God is the Everything in heaven is basically as God. And I've heard people say that. Oh, it's it's boring. I don't care. Well, everything that you see in this earth that is amazing, all the things that you love, every good gift comes from God above. Mm -hmm. No matter what you think is is it, whatever is it, it's turning your, your eyes up, like all the lights and the flashes might be a game, might be some video game. All of that is still a gift from God. Unless it's something inherently evil, you know, music can be a gift from God, everything. He gives it all to you, but hell is the other place that you will go. Right now in heaven, you kind of do have any choice that you want. You can choose any religion that you want. You really can. You mean earth? Here on earth. What did I say? In heaven. Oh, sorry. Here on earth, you can choose anything that you want. You have free will. God would want you to choose him. He would say, I would like you to choose my son, which is the only way to get to heaven and be with me because I love you dearly. You are my image bearer. I don't want you to go to hell, but if you choose not to have my son or any cleansing or any washing, then I'm sorry. You don't, you've chosen. You've made the choice. You can't blame me because I have continuously offered you to come and be part of my family. But it says God doesn't want to have he doesn't want to force anything on us. Never. I mean, he wants us to come there by our own free will. And we have to come by our own free will. Uh, he, he doesn't, because otherwise, he could just made like robots. Uh, and because that's basically what we that would it be if he forces us to kind of. It's just God is all about liberty. He even gave the angels the liberty to yeah. choose. Liberty is God's essence and his freedom. He wants freedom for all. You, you talk about the Constitution or the United States and how we're, you know. One nation under God, and it's all about freedom and liberty. He's the author of that first, mm -hmm. and that's what He wants for each one of us. I was thinking, like maybe let, let's say just people who just want to have fire insurance. They maybe think, okay, I don't want to get to hell, but uh, I just want to be in heaven, some or of heaven, and maybe I can't be on my side. But the problem is that everything is heaven is going to be separated from God. It's going to be separated from Him. And even the light that is in heaven is coming from Him. The glory of him is the one that gives the light. There's no sun. It's just his glory that's going to give the light. In Revelation 21, 23, it says, And the city has no need to me of the sun or the moon or of the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God has uh, uh, illuminated it, and its lamp is the lamp. Amen. So basically, that's the and for us, that sounds great. Yeah. But for someone who's living in darkness, it's going to be horrible for them that's why they're they're pushing it away yeah so so why don't we start to live a life of worship to him here on earth we know that it will also help us on the life here on earth that if we have an attitude to worship him we can to see stuff changes in our, our life if we put him first and we worship him when our lives is just uh, that we want to glorify him or we want to worship him when we look we read in the Bible how the word they kind of put the worship around them. They saw how like a battle was won and they didn't have to do anything because God was fighting for them. So when we are worshiping Him, That's God right. will fight for us. Amen. But let's say we look at the religion that are trying to read some kind of heavenly law around. If all these religions would lead to the same place, 
why would there be different ways to reach them? Why would God come up with different ways to reach him? Like, uh, like different, yeah, and you have all, the all different kind of religions. But, and also, if it's like a different way, way that might contradict with each other, then he will be in conflict with himself. So that's why, that's also something that kind of contradicts this thing that all the religions do to heaven. Because a lot of religions kind of contradict themselves. Uh, I saw a video about a person how, which by reasoning came to faith in Jesus. Hmm. He said that the most of the world religions, they all give some credit to Jesus Christ. The Muslim says that he was a prophet. Uh, I also heard it mentioned that we should follow the like in, in the, uh, I read the, uh, some other uh, it, video that someone mentioned how the Quran basically tells that we need to follow the original book, which is the Bible. Huh. Uh, and then they kind of, later they kind of start to contradict it. So that's kind of like how the Quran is kind of contradicting itself. First it says we should follow it, but then it says like, no. So it's like, uh, now it's starting to kind of contradict, it, it contradict itself. Also, uh, And then we also have like Eastern religion. They also talk about the like a Christ consciousness. Uh, Buddha would say that uh, like Christ was a Buddha, which basically like another incarnation of God. So in this person's like the one who was in the video searching, he saw that all this religion, religious people like the kind of based as the leaders of the religions, they were pointing to Jesus, saying that Jesus is one of the way, and we are. Uh, another way. So they all always pointed Jesus to be one way and then um, they were one way. Uh, they were not like real anything except that Jesus like you can kind of go between the different religions. Uh, they were not like real anything except that Jesus was one of the ways. Then in John 14 6 Jesus says that he is the only way to the Father. So most religions they give Jesus credit and tell that he is a one way. But Jesus himself only gave himself the credit. So he would basically eliminate all other ways because if all the religions point to him and he's only pointed to himself to be the only way, then he basically eliminates all the other religions. So if a leader of a well, if a leader of a religion is certain that they are the only way, why would they now also say that that's another way when they cannot point to Jesus? And Jesus and Jesus said that he was the only way. And he's the only one who said that, that he's the only way. So we can also look at the, the history of different religions. Uh, all the basic believers, they died and they stay dead. I mean, we have like the Buddha, we have Muhammad, we have a bunch of other names, but they all died and they stay dead. But Jesus is the only one who died but came back. Amen. Another thing is that if you read in Matthew 20, uh, 27 51, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. So, with this act, he also kind of invalidated the old covenant, which is what the Judaism is based on. So, when he tore the veil in half, he showed that he is the way into the Father and into the Holy of Holies. And through and no and not through some earthly priests, like what I mentioned, that we are temple, and he's the one basically who, who went before, and he is the like what he mentioned that uh, when he was walking, he said that tear down this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. So he, right. he talked about himself, himself that he will become the temple and that he will become the way into the Father. That's right. But even like in Christianity, we have like different denomination that are kind of creating their own kind of doctrine and uh, they might kind of create like a doctrine based on maybe one Bible verse taking out context or a wrong interpretation so this is why it's important important to read and study God's word and so we know that something is like a heresy and not a healthy doctrine Amen. like uh, some the not Denomination might claim that uh, some things in the Bible was only for like the time of the church, so they could kind of build up like the church. 
for instance, we have, we, like walking in the supernatural power, some some denomination they claim that this was only like a miracle, like during the time of the apostles, or, or only Jesus could do it because only he was Jesus, and we never are meant to do anything as great as Jesus. Whereas he said in the word, you are meant to do far greater yep. things than I've ever done. So why would we invalidate the very word of God with yes. that poor, unhealthy, and, and basically words from hell, the, the doctrine that would lead everybody out of alignment from their destiny? I mean, like that, what I said, I mean, Jesus never said that you are only meant to have this power of the Holy Spirit to start the church. And after that, uh, I people cannot take it away because he said that I would give you the Holy Spirit. He never said, well, I'm just going to give you the Holy Spirit for a short period of time, and then I'm going to take it back. In uh, Mark 16, 17, 18 says, These signs will accompany those who have believed in me. Uh, believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So Jesus said here that anyone that believes, not one that believes in the other church. So this, uh, so we know that what Jesus said, it's still valid today. That's because right. and and he never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So, so I mean, so what he said back then, it doesn't change because he never changed. Amen. And and he can't uh, and he can't uh, contradict himself and he can't lie like that. That's right. So let's come back to that. Uh, to, that people sometimes say that uh, like the, the church is kind of exclusive when it comes, like when it says that uh, Jesus is the only way, that nothing else is uh, like, um, yeah, like what you said, that I am the way, I'm the only way. So I kind of heard like a good analogy that uh, let's say that uh, I am in my house and you want to come in, or maybe uh, I kind of move you out in the, somewhere on the street, and I said, well, Come to my house and maybe like an hour or so. Uh, the door's going to be locked. But how you have a whole bunch of keys. Uh, so you need to have your bright key to get it. So let's see if uh, if I give you like this whole bunch of uh, uh, keys on a chain. So it has maybe like let's say 100 keys. Will they all work? Or is it only one key? That would work. So it's only one. So key that those one hundred keys represent all these different things. Like this, yeah, it represents all the And okay. the guy that met you was the father in heaven. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And so, yeah, this the is, house is heaven. Yeah, but it, yeah, we can say that too. But it, this is more like an analogy that if you want to come into my house, you can only use one key. Yeah, but and that's the same in the thing end, with we heaven. Want, yes, we want to get to heaven, so the father would Jesus. say, "One key is the only one." Why would God give him a hundred keys? Why would God give us all these different religions? Well, He doesn't. I mean, he, he's like, you have a choice. You can make stuff up and go along with it, or you can go and read my word. The word of God is always active and true, like a double-edged sword, and it is always powerful. And when you speak it, it always comes to pass. Whatever it says, it comes to pass. Whenever you speak in agreement with heaven and in agreement with the word, it will come to pass. That also includes the negative stuff. There's curses in there. And so you need to be very guarded and careful about what words, what careless words you speak. Yeah, so I was thinking like, well, like, I know it's like this. I mean, like what you said, it's maybe all the keys, all the different religions, but there's only one that leads into heaven. And then we'll open that Jesus. door. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So why would God create different ways, like mm -hmm. different religions, to come and approach him when some of them are contradicting each other? Like we met what this guy from the other video said, like they are, they could not agree on anything except for that, that Jesus is one uh, one of the ways. Mm -hmm. So they cannot contradict each other. So why would not God create this thing different ways to talk to them when they are not uh, aligned with each other? So that means he cannot contradict himself. Then. So God has sent his son Jesus to die for our sins. And he is the only way for us to come to the Father. Like what he said, I am the way. I am the only way to the Father. So when we accept this free gift that he died for us, and because of that, we can now boldly enter into the Father. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 4, 16 says, death and let us draw near with confidence to the throne of peace, mm -hmm. so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time. Hallelujah. That's great. Love us, thank you, Lord, that you are the only way, that we don't have to 
figure out that it's a business business, but what we know that in your body says that you is all the only way. And we have no decision. So we don't have to work like we have work for salvation. It's up to you. Just pray right now, Lord. Cleanse us and help us to just see that you are the only way. By the prayers of the people around us, Lord, that, that we will be a testament to them, Lord. That we will be an ambassador for your kingdom, that you are the only way. And that our testament will attract them, will draw them to your kingdom. Use us, Lord. Now, Amen. Lord, just to on us, Lord, that if we are not yes, like Lord. good representing of the kingdom, Lord, cleanse us so that we are that representative of the kingdom, that yes, we walk Lord. in a supernatural power, that we walk in, in, a, in a, what your word is saying, that we, that war, our walk is That's right. With the That's word, right. Lord, that Amen. We are not with our mm-hmm. word. What mm-hmm. your word is saying, Lord, that, that we can't just say, yes, I'm Lord. sick, because in, in your word it says, by your stripes, I'm that's right. So know that we are aligning our words with your word and that um, uh, with your word and that our word out in our mouth is aligned with your word and that That's we right. all have a trust and believe yes, every word that yes. we have written in Amen. the Bible, that they are true and that are, they are meant for us, Lord. So Amen. they will cleanse us, forgive us, Lord, yes, we Lord. doubt it. Because sometimes if we are doubting your word, oh Lord, help us. Um, Forgive us of our doubting and that we are just walking. Yes, in, Lord. Uh, that we walk in the power that you have That's right. That's us, right. That Amen. Walk in, and they lay hands on the sick and casting a demons and we can deceive people so that they yes, so Jesus, Lord. Lord, help us to just be a light. Yes, for Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask this stuff and dedicate uh, this week to you, Lord. We want your name to be glorified in this nation. We pray for nature by cleansing of this nation. Amen. We want to see righteousness to That's rise right. up in this nation. We That's want right. to see your name to be lifted up. And that this nation will be a nation that is glorified you. Yes, Lord. That this nation will say again that in God we trust. Hallelujah. So just pray for this nation for a cleansing for an uh, intervention and invasion of your spirit. Yes, Lord. In this nation. Well, we just lift up and dedicate this nation to the name of the Amen. Amen. And let freedom reign. Well, we're so glad that you joined us this morning. We are so blessed and honored to be on this platform. Our pastor is Senior Pastors, Pastor Jack and Ismael Flores of Vida para las Naciones Internacional have um, allowed us and um, given us the permission to be on this platform. Uh, so we just want to honor them and thank them. And we want to thank you for coming and joining us this morning. We want you to go out and really shine for him. Jesus came to say, you are a city on the hill. Be that city, be that person full of light, full of his presence, full of his spirit. Be ready to birth that Baby Jesus, you be filled with uh, his un- an understanding that you are intelligent, you are wanted, you are um, chosen. And, uh, and remember, like Pastor Nick said, Jesus is the only way for anybody to have access to heaven. Mm-hmm. So have a wonderful week. Filter everything through the Holy Spirit. Goodbye. <laughs>